Hello everyone, this is Simona Silvestri and welcome to another episode of CS Mentor. And today the topic that I would like to cover is how to write an abstract. That generally is the first thing after the title that you need to write once you write a paper. So first of all, what is an abstract? So the abstract after the title of the list of others is the first thing that you encounter in a paper. Here there is an example of a paper that I published a few years ago and you can see where the abstract here is, this little part in yellow. So what an abstract is, is a short summary of the paper. Some conferences and some journals have limitations on the number of words that you can use as an abstract. So for example, a typical limitation is no more than 200 words. However, even if the abstract is short and should be significantly informative. And I mean, who's gonna read this abstract? Where well, many people and sometimes more than you would expect. So of course, if you are someone that you know is looking for a paper on a certain topic, it looks like the title has something to do with what you're looking for. And then if the title sounds good, then the next thing you go and read is the abstract to see if the paper is actual about the topic that you are interested in. But it's not just for that. So for example, if you submit a paper to a journal, then the editor may use the abstract to decide who are going to be the reviewers that will review the paper. May also try to understand what is the quality of the publication. So really the abstract is the first impression that we give to whoever is reading the paper, especially when the paper is submitted and needs to be reviewed. Also, the abstract is considered by TPC members, which are uh, responsible for reviewing the paper. So those DPC members will look at the papers that are assigned to them to understand if they have the skills to review it, to understand the topic that are covered, and what they're going to read is the abstract, because it's the only thing they're allowed to see until they accept the review in order to see the actual full paper. And many other actors may look at the abstract to understand what the paper is about. So this is very important that it's written very, very informative. So an abstract, even if very short, needs to summarize several different components. It should summarize what is the problem, it should summarize what is the state of the art, it should summarize what is the novelty of the paper, what is the approach, and what are the results. So the big question is how can we basically summarize the entire paper in just 200 words? And of course, the best technique to do is to read very good papers published in very good journals and conferences, and I'm going to make other videos to uh, suggest you and advise you on how to identify very good journals and conferences. But here I want to give you an example of how we can fit in this very small amount of words all the information that is actually needed. So this is the abstract for the same paper that I showed you before. And the paper is about proposing a method based on network tomography to monitor traffic in smart cities. So the first thing that you want to do in an abstract is to start with what is the problem? and why it's important. So in this paper, we did it with this one single sentence, say the traffic monitoring is a key enable for several planning and management activities of a smart city. So here, what are the, the key components? We are saying that we are doing traffic monitoring, so that's the problem. And you know, traffic monitoring is a kind of a sufficiently general term that most people should understand. We are talking about traffic and we are talking about monitoring this traffic. Uh, we could have said vehicular traffic monitoring, but here we were submitting on transactions on intelligent transportation systems. So the term vehicular was kind of implied. Also, why it is important. And so we say that it's important for planning and management activities of a smart city. Then the second point that you should address is what are the limitations of existing solutions? So in this case, we mentioned that traditional techniques are not cost efficient, are not flexible, and are not scalable. So of course, these are very small points that the reviewer is going to expect to find when it's going to read the introduction, the read work, and the rest of the paper. But here, at least, you give a little impression of why what we think the state of the art is still missing. Then we can start talking about our approach and say, OK, what are the advantages of what we propose? Well, we propose an approach that, in this case, does not rely on probe vehicles, does not require local digestion systems such as GPS, and it only exploits a very limited number of cameras placed at intersections. So the reviewer or the reader in general starts getting some ideas of what the paper is going to propose. Then how do you do it? So here you should give an idea of what are the main technical components that your paper is actually proposing. So for example, here we mentioned that we've developed a radical framework. It's based on network tomography. It infers the traveling times of road segments. It, used, it considers the presence of uh, noisy measurements, also unpredictability of the paths that are taken by the vehicles. And also we address the issues of optimality of placing the cameras. 
in order to maximize coverage. And you can also mention here some of the mathematical techniques or techniques in general you are using in order to achieve these goals. And finally, the last aspect that you should address are the results. So what is the summary of the results to actually show in the paper? So you propose all this, how you verify it. And so here we say that we provide extensive assessment under different realistic topologies. So for example, we use San Francisco in California. We that are extracted use Google Maps ABIs, which also give an impression of uh, how realistic the experiments that we have carried out are, even if they're just simulation in this case. And then we provide some numbers of how we compare versus states of the art. So for example, a low error in traveling times, and sometimes here you can also mention some improvements versus the state of the art. So things that you can say are, for example, oh, we are 10% better in all the considered scenarios than the best performing approach in the state of the art or something like that. So I just want to conclude this video summarizing how it is important to write a good abstract for the success of the paper because here you're really creating in the mind of the reviewer, in the mind of the editor, in the mind of the reader, what will come next and also the fact that your paper is complete so that there's no piece that is missing i'm going to make another video on what are the different parts of the paper and how you make sure that the paper is actually complete at least in our area that i would say extends to most of computer science and computer engineering but in general the abstract should condense all this information a very small part so that whoever reads knows what is coming and know that the paper is complete and hopefully this will create a good impression, that's good reviews, and that's the paper being accepted. So thank you very much for uh, following this video. And if you have questions, please ask in the comments down below and see you at the next one. Bye.